So, um, um, there's an intimation of relation. Um, as I said before, you, I can never speak of um, the I either without speaking of the thou or the it. To speak of the I then, anytime I speak of the I, in either my relational experience to the thou or to the it, right? So when I, when I evoke the I, I evoke is existence, right? So that when I speak of the I, so the one thing that they have in common, though they're different, the one thing that they have in common is that when I speak of the I, I'm speaking of existence. Right? When I speak of the I, I'm speaking of existence. They have things that, that are separate from, from them both. But the one thing that they share in common is that when I speak of the I, I'm speaking of the it. When I speak of the I with reference to my relational experience to the thou, then I evoke existence, in, in a sense. He says, I stand in it. That's the, I think that's the terminology that he uses, right? When I speak of my, um, when I evoke the I, when I speak of the I, in my relational experience to the it, I stand in existence. I'm in this room. Um, the one thing to recognize, and I'm going to talk about this in a little bit, is that the word speak or utter needs a bit of qualification. Um, Technically speaking, for Buber, you can't speak of the I that is defined in terms of its rel relational experience to the thou. It's ineffable. It transcends language. We'll, s we'll see how you utter or how you speak of your relational experience to the thou in a second. Um, for the it, your relational experience to the I, it, you can, you literally can speak it, right? You can, you know, my relational experience to the it is da 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 da. So, um, Again, Buber is, uh, I, I strongly recommend, um, if you're interested at all in any of this discourse, to actually go and read, you know, get the book. I, I got this book for like two bucks as an undergrad. I actually got it for $2.99. There's a sticker. Um, so I got it for like two bucks. Um, it's, you can read through this whole book in, I mean, if you're just breezing through it, you can read through it in like an hour or so, hour or two hours. Um, it's going to take me a lot longer because, you know, I'm going to like nitpick and like meticulously go through it. But um, it's good to see what he's saying to make sense of all of this sort of cryptic, this cryptic language. Okay. Um, the next thing that we need to do now is actually talk about this differentiation. We see how um, my, my utterance of the I is a recognition and affirmation of existence. Um, whether that relational experience is the I-thou relational experience or the I-it relational experience. We see that they share this in common, but what don't they share in common? What's divergent between the two is the question. And Buber talks about this. Here's specifically how we delineate the, I, the relational experience of the I-thou from the relational experience of the I-it. Anytime we're talking about the I-thou, it's always, right, my relational experience with respect to the I, I thou is always spoken of with the whole being, being, and I put spoken in square scarecrows because it does not literally spoken with my mouth, right? Spoken with the whole, right? We'll, we'll make sense of what this means in a second, right? My relational experience to the thou, to the I thou, is always spoken. In scare quotes, not literally spoken, sort of with my body. It's spoken with my body is a, it's a very introductory beginning, initial way to describe what this means, right? It's spoken with my body. Just to give you a, um, for newcomers to, to Buber, what does this mean? You obviously know that there are different forms of communication, right? I don't need to speak with my mouth in, mouth in order to communicate ideas. I can communicate ideas without s speech, right? I can write this on the board. And there's an image that's presented in your mind. I could show you a picture, and you, 100% of you, 99% of you, would be able to identify the right picture. Let's say I had a picture of this or some other thing. You'd be able to identify it, right? So this is, this is a form of speech act, but not even that. Um, now you can imagine that I could just use a symbol, and I can go like this, right? So I'm, I'm, in a sense, I'm not speaking, but I'm communicating. Um, all of those are really understood in, time, in terms of speech acts, despite the fact that I'm not actually talking. 
It's none of that, right? It's not a symbol, it's not a gesture, it's not body language, it's none of that. I'm speaking with my being. Um, and we recognize, I'm not going to jump the gun, but when we, you know, as we progress, we'll make more sense of this. Um, we recognize that since we share this in common, right, with my relational experience with the Tao and my relational experience, and I'll put it here, my, relations, my relational experience with the Tao and my relational experience with the It, we recognize that part of this speech act has to correspond to existence, right? There is a relationship in which my existence, my being, the fact that I am, right, my existence in a sense, the, not in a sense, my existence as such, my being, the fact that I am, um, is, is a form of, I don't want to use the word communication, but is a form of relation with the thou. And in a little bit, uh, hopefully this, this makes sense. So, always spoken with whole being. What differentiates my relation, my relational experience with the it from the thou? Well, it's never spoken with the whole being, right? So you can see how it's different. Right? So that the, and let me just so that it's clear, that always, never, okay. So, um, we can see now how we delineate the relational experience between the I thou and the I it. We can also see what the relational experience between the I thou and the I it have in common. They both um, make reference to and are always understood in terms of existence. You cannot talk about, for Buber, a relational experience that is the I without the thou, or that is the I without the it, he, she. Um, uh, furthermore, you cannot have this account of the I that is independent to experience, right? And I don't mean that in the a priori sense. I know that's sort of Kantian language. I mean, um, devoid of uh, experience. Um, so that's what they share in common. This speech, right, is a speech with the whole being. And as we progress, we'll see what that means. Um, we recognize that this speech of the whole being has to do with existence in this sense, right? Uh, the fact that I exist makes an affirmation of some sort, and that affirmation is in relation to the thou, but it's also a relation to the it. So that if you think of it, a human, right? And I'm just going to just grossly draw this, you know, they're, they're really, I, I don't necessarily need to draw the thou above, because the, the thou is actually here. Part of the thou is like here. But you can imagine that we have an object in the world, and we'll just write thou up here. Right? There's a relational experience that I have to the thou, and a relational experience that I have to the it. Right? Um, neither are mutually exclusive. Right? I'm, uh, both of them define my experience and existence. Right? So this is what we're attempting. This is what he's attempting to make sense of. Okay, um, now, speaking of uh, uh, existence, there are two realms for Buber of existence. And I actually like, I don't want to erase it, but we'll see. So there are two realms of existence. Um, the first realm is the realm of the it, right? The realm of, and actually I'll have to erase this, right? 